Why are they leaving? Hey, everybody, we're back here with the host of The Problem with Jon Stewart. Jon Stewart. Jon Stewart. Mm, mm. I want to I I talk to you about something. We, we, you and I had a, a, a fascinating conversation last yes. week. It was actually, I think it was the day after the election. I think it was Wednesday, because mm. I called you up on the drive in to go, hey, how about that last night? Not, not what we thought. Like, wasn't a rising tide of fascism. Perhaps the tide wasn't as rising as fast as we thought. Kind of nice, everything. But got to say, though, not great to see a lot of sort of uh, updrafting of some, you know, uh, casual anti-Semitism or some sort of old kind of Kabbalistic conspiracy theories well, out there. The Jews, and you were like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah so the great. Jews are... So, so last week, it was after the, there was the Kanye situation and then obviously the, the Kyrie situation. And after the Kyrie situation, Kyrie Irving, uh, on Twitter was trending the Jews. It was just the, for the words the Jews mm -hmm. uh, trending on Twitter. Yeah. And so it was, it was bittersweet. Because it's always nice to trend on Twitter. I mean, that... It's never bad. Uh, it's yeah. never bad, but it's never... I knew that if I checked it, it wasn't going to be like, the Jews bought everyone ice cream. Like, I knew it wasn't going to be... Yes. The Jews, ABC's new hit sitcom. That's right. Uh, but because it was Kyrie and it was about the Nets, the Jews was trending under sports, which, for us... Nice. That's a win. Never happened before. Yeah. Sandy you know, Koufax and then this. Sandy Koufax, then it was like 50 years, and then, and then this trended. It's, look, I'm, you know, as our spokes Jew, and uh, <laughs> we hear you, the people out there, and we know, you know, the power and control that the Jews have uh, collectively, because we, that's how we wield it. Sure. It's all unanimous decision. The, correct. Uh, I'm not on all the committees, and, uh, but... Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know who ended uh, Kanye's Adidas deal. That wasn't my committee. I'm on uh, oil, uh, oil prices and bagel flavors. <laughs> I do bagel flavors. By the way, and I say this to all you out there who enjoy bagels, uh, Blueberry was a rogue committee. That was not us. I don't know where that came from. Mm -hmm. But uh, in terms of uh, controlling, obviously... Uh, the world. Um, sorry. <laughs> it's my hope in my lifetime, and we hear this, but it is my sincere hope that in my lifetime I do get to see a Christian president. I, I hope that... <laughs> I hope that just... I think America's ready for it. To see a president stand up and swear in, maybe on, and I say this with no regret, on a Bible. <laughs> Jews have controlled it for too long. <laughs> and so it would, it would be our honor to allow you one four-year term. <laughs> Just... Uh, it's, it's, it's really fascinating, the... Uh, uh, you know, first of all, the Kanye thing, I think everybody, he can be erratic and he says things, and that didn't surprise me. The Kyrie thing surprised me a bit. You don't expect to get it from someone named Irving. <laughs> really thought he was one of ours. Well, no, you're, very listen, you're very generous. It's, you're very generous, I gotta say. Thank you. And there's a lot, everybody wants to say now, now, I, everybody obviously calls me and you say, like, do you see Dave on SNL? And I'm like, yes, we're very good friends. I always watch and send nice texts. He normalized anti Semitism with the monologue. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know if you've been on comment sections on most news articles, but uh, it's pretty <laughs> normal. <laughs> like, anti Semitism, I mean, I, I, as you know, it's. It's incredibly normal. But the one thing I will say is, I don't believe that censorship and, and penalties are the way to end anti-Semitism or to not gain understanding. I don't believe in that. And I think it's the wrong way for us to approach it. Kyrie Irving, they suspended him from playing basketball. If you want to punish this man, send him to the Knicks. I think that would be... <laughs>
Because I look at it like this. Anti-Semitic? Perhaps. But he can create his own shot. And that's what we're looking for. No, but in, in, in all seriousness, you know, penalizing somebody for having a thought I don't think is the way to change their minds or, or gain understanding. This is a grown-ass man. And the idea that you would say to him, we're going to put you in a timeout. You have to sit in the corner and stare at the wall until you no longer believe that the Jews control the international banking system. Like, we have to get past this in the country, the ability to... Look, people think this. People think Jews control Hollywood. People think Jews control the banks. And to pretend that they don't and to not deal with it in a straightforward manner, we will never gain any kind of understanding with each other. Well, what do you imagine a more straightforward manner would be? Because people people have the right to say whatever they want. I've said that, you know, also any comic has a right to say anything sure. they want. And they'll probably find an audience for that. Mm -hmm. And that's that's been borne out the last few years. Right. But so what is the response? What What is the response? So, because people have the right to have a negative reaction to what people say on stage. I've gotten it a million times. You've gotten it a million times. Sure, absolutely. So, what do you imagine a response is to something if people perceive anti-Semitism in someone's in well, into what all, Kyrie Irving posts right. or uh, what Kanye says or what Dave said on Saturday night? What do you think a, a good response well, first would of all, be? I think just reflexively naming things anti-Semitism is as reductive as some of the things that they might be saying. It immediately shuts down a conversation. I, I would the, say that people said that they perceived a, 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 a promulgation of even if, if with a comedic intention a promulgation of anti-Semitic tropes. That doesn't mean the person is an anti-Semite. Comedy is, is reductive. And I think part of what it is is we play with tropes because everyone has prejudice in their lives and, and in the way that they view things. And comics rely on those prejudices as a shorthand for our material. Even the wokest of comics plays with tropes to a certain extent. But my point is the most interesting thing to come out of this, in my mind, was something Kanye said on his, uh, on his tour that he was doing after he said that, and then he got interviewed by five you know, different people uh, because the media model is arson and conflict. Um, he said something fascinating in my mind. He said, hurt people hurt people. And if the point of all this is then to heal people, the only way to heal a wound is to open it up and cleanse it, and that stings, that hurts but you have to expose it to air. And I'm afraid that the general tenor of conversation in this country is cover it up, bury it, put it to the outskirts, and don't deal with it. And what I would say is, you know, look at it from a, a black perspective. It's a culture that feels that its wealth has been extracted by different groups, whites, Jews, things. Whether it's true or not isn't the issue. That's the feeling in that community. And if you don't understand that that's where it's coming from, then you can't deal with it and you can't sit down with them and explain that being in an industry isn't the same as having a nefarious and controlling interest in that industry and intention, right? And that's been the anti-Semitic trope. But you need to be able to meet people from what their community is feeling as well. So in terms of dealing with it, as saying for the way you might be able to deal with it is to say, okay, let me try to understand why you feel that way. Mm -hmm. Let me try to deconstruct. That's right. With, with facts, why that is not the case. That's right. And, but if you can't do that, if you're not allowed to say it, you know, Dave said something in the SNL monologue that I thought was instructive as well, which he says, it shouldn't be this hard to talk about things. And that is what we're talking about. Look, I can't pretend that there aren't ton of people in this country and this world who believe that the Jews have an unreasonable amount of control over the systems and they wield it as puppet masters. I'm called anti-Semitic because I'm against Israel's treatment of Palestinians. I'm called other things from other people based on other opinions that I have. But those shut down debate they're used as a cudgel. And whether it be comedy or discussion or anything else, 
if we don't have the wherewithal to meet each other with what's reality, then how do we, how do we move forward is, is my question. I don't enjoy it. Don't, don't get me wrong. You know, when, when people I admire, whose music I like or things like that, come out and say, how many of you are in show? But, you know, here's the deal. We have our own tropes, like a white person's success is because of privilege. A minority's success is empowerment. A Jew's success, well, that's a conspiracy. You feel that. I feel that. But I have to be able to express that to people. If I can't say that's bull and explain why, then where do we go? And if we all just shut it down, then we retreat to our little corners of misinformation and it metastasizes. And the whole point of all this is to not let it metastasize and to get it out in the air and talk about it. Like, like I know you don't like Jews. I see it in your eyes. <laughs> Really just one of you. <laughs> Bet Midler? Um, no, I mean, the other side of it is, you know, look, if you don't want us around, write your own <laughs> Broadway shows. Well, John. Does that make sense? I know you John, disagree with this. Uh, I, you know what, John? I don't disagree with you. Really? Oh, as I said to you... Are you Stephen Colbert? Yes. I, I, I don't with the blue check system that Elon Musk has, I don't yeah. know who's who anymore. I don't disagree with you, John. I just wanted to say that I condemn anti-Semitism and all its forms, <laughs> and I stand with all of my friends in the Jewish community. A counterpoint. <laughs> we have to take another break, but we'll be right back with more, Mr. John Stewart.